Welcome to this walkthrough of the Goldmine investment model from eFinancialModels.com. I would like to uh, take you through uh, this model and explain you how, how this model uh, works. Uh, this model has different uh, spreadsheets. The key spreadsheets are is this uh, summary spreadsheet and second also the spreadsheet with the uh, forecast and financial projections for for the wall uh, for the wall project on the summary spreadsheets spreadsheet you can see that uh, what's covered is basically the uh, the forecast of the uh, of the financial results of the of the mine uh, operation but also a certain balance um, also basically a forecast of the balance sheet and the development of the cash, dividends, equity, financial debt position, etc. Uh, also included is a uses and sources of financing uh, table, um, an uh, analysis of the uh, project uh, metric in terms of the project's IRR and delivered equity uh, IRR and also the uh, <coughs> The uh, project's uh, NPV. What you also have uh, below is all the assumptions are listed on this sheet, so it makes it pretty easy to change any of these assumptions and see what's the effect on the project's metric. So you can directly input the assumptions here and you see next uh, the next second what, what's changing. Uh, another section included here is the uh, sensitivity analysis. You have here uh, two options. Either you can run it on the project IRR or on the equity IRR. And what the sensitivity analysis tells you is what happens if some of the key assumptions, the uh, assumptions uh, change. For instance, if the mine operating cost gets more expensive or less expensive, you can see the effect uh, either on equity IRR or on the project IRR. And here there are several um, uh, variables selected, um, the gold price, cost inflation, mill, mine. And what your task is, is to basically get a bit, uh, familiarize yourself a bit how this model <coughs> uh, reacts and also pay close attention to those uh, assumptions which uh, where any, any change has a big impact on the on the on the result, and below some more uh, general assumptions to uh, to steer this um, this model. Um, this is just an overview, but I would just like to show you the main uh, logic of this model. So the way the, this model works is that you assume a certain ore production uh, capacity, which can be processed in the mill um, uh, per day. And when you know the operational days, you can then uh, calculate it, the, the model gives you a forecast of the milled ore per, per year. As this is a mine with a limited uh, lifetime, you also have to take a view how long this mine will be operational. Here, 10 years are selected, and you can see that after 10 years, uh, the cash flows and, and, and financials basically stop. So this is... A, this means that when we look at this project, we basically, uh, in effect, we only uh, consider the cash flows for a period of this, uh, of this mine life. Uh, what you also have here is once you have the ore milled, which uh, is uh, costly, uh, you do this because you want to recover a precious metal, in this case a gold, or it can be also any other uh, metal. <coughs> And for this, you need different uh, variables. You need one variable is the ore grade and the other is the mill recovery uh, factor. Both you can find in the uh, assumption, assumption sheet. And you can also figure out what, of course, what changes if any of these assumptions uh, are different than what you have assumed, uh, assumed here. Uh, uh, this basically goes on. Um, this is just a model which focuses really on the key uh, variables without uh, distracting yourself uh, too much in, in, in too many details. The idea is to focus on, on the key uh, variables and pretty quickly come up with a meaningful uh, forecast how this uh, mine should uh, uh, perform from a financial perspective. The, then the model basically uh, builds the for you the income statement 
uh, the forecast, the balance sheet and the uh, cash flow uh, statement. So you can actually get a very clear view on how this, um, how your financials will look like. If you have any questions, you the way to, to deal with that is to go back and see which uh, variables uh, influences uh, these, uh, these, this forecast and then uh, see if that applies in, in your case or if your case is maybe, uh, is maybe different. You also have here a model to forecast uh, dividends. There are two ways. You can either forecast dividends as a percentage of net income for instance, I can 50% uh, of uh, net income could be issued, distributed every year as dividends, and then it will uh, show up in uh, in the dividend stream. But you will also see that your cash balance builds up over over the years. So another way to do that is that you use this cash sweep model, and everything above this limit of 200k, or you can set any other. Uh, minimum cash balance you like will be uh, distributed as dividends, leaving the company just with 200k cash uh, per year. Then below there is the section with the free cash flow analysis. You need the free cash flow to firm to calculate the uh, project um, <coughs> IRR. Um, <coughs> in this case, project IRR, and also the model will give you net present value, and it will also look in which year your uh, your accumulated free cash flows get positive and this will give you the, the payback period of the of the project. The shorter of course the, the better. Then you also might be interested in the levered equity IRR. If you can obtain uh, debt financing then you should uh, include that um, in the financing structure. This is steered um, on the executive summary. If you have debt you can as, as I've put it here, you can uh, assume the amount of debt financing. If not, you <coughs> you remove it and put to put to zero as you as 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 it as it applies to <coughs> to your to your case. And basically, uh, another another table you have here <coughs> the forecasted the financial ratios of this uh, mine. You can also see. Uh, you see here now there, there's not much leverage uh, on the company. That's why we reduce the debt. So if we go back and use debt financing, you will see that the company <clears throat> actually could even uh, can digest some debt financing or could even take on more, more debt in this, in this case. And to finish uh, this, we have below a fixed asset schedule, which gives you the depreciation uh, of the fixed assets is just uh, um, <clears throat> a very general uh, model, but it's uh, it's serving the uh, the purpose for a <clears throat> for a first run. Uh, exploration costs you can also amortize those, and you have a schedule for the for the debt financing. And overall, this all is then summarized here <clears throat> on the on the executive summary. So I hope this gives you gave you a good um, overview of what this model is all about. Uh, you can use this model uh, just to build up your investment case. You could o can also use it to uh, show this to the banks or to, uh, to investors and have a discussion on, um, on, on negotiations how, uh, in, in terms of raising uh, financing. So I hope this walkthrough was useful. If yes, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and visit our website efinancialmodels.com. A link to the model is included in the description below. Thank you for watching.